paying our respects to an old favorite here, uh, Protein Cake, also known as the Jeff Alberts uh, Whey Protein Cake, and my personal favorite mix, just because I think when once you take up this bodybuilding thing, you, know, you kind of like those uh, nutty, grainy taste. I think we all kind of uh, have a little hint of that left from our our, our broham days. But this is the pre-workout. We will eat this, and then we will discuss how it is that we are structuring our workouts this time around, or or, or better said, training sessions. And then I will give you guys a just a an example of what a normal day looks like. But um, before that, let's 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 eat. I was trying to you know use this as a uh, my tripod and here's my um, lovely assistant Paulo here uh, but that's just not gonna work out the angle was funny just didn't look right so we are basically going to go about it this way a little smudge on the camera so got that fixed but I'm gonna just do it this way it's not quite as interactive and, and hopefully even though sometimes I think it helps when you have someone in front of the of the board kind of taking you through it otherwise it's just the exact same um, scenery uh, the whole way which can be uh, um, easy to zone out on but again I'll do my best to try to explain this in a in a uh, clear comprehensive manner but I definitely think it's gonna be one of those splits that once you guys see it uh, unravel over the course of the next few weeks again it will make a lot more sense it's just pretty unconventional by by uh, most bodybuilding um, standards by what is typically used out there so um, this up here that's going to be those are the main movements that we're going to be progressing with so I pick front squats because again um, as some of you might know I've been dealing with issues with my SI joint and uh, front squats they always feel lovely and also I think compared to most uh, I, I progress quite predictably when it comes to these I think at a certain point I was in the high 160s and I was front squatting if I would have you know given you my best uh, one rep attempt it was probably a bit over 350 which uh, not bad for a guy in the high 160s so front squats and me we get along and I find them quite easy to progress on and again my um, joints the good and the bad they really like front squats uh, decline dumbbell presses I'm going back to dumbbells because they feel really good really natural I have an easy time progressing on them I went with decline because um, I, th I think personally when it comes to just full pec recruitment that's where I feel I, I feel the most um, is actually taking places on the on a slight decline and then also because it's compared to an incline press where you have to kick them up into position or a flat where you kind of lay back and hope you're in the right position I feel like a decline you know gives me a little bit more time to set up so uh, as we progress and get into heavier dumbbells yeah, personally I just think it's um, for me anyways it's it's much more practical uh, glute thrust that's going to be my main hip hip hinge movement for the time being I am still not 100% okay to deadlift so that's gonna that's gonna be um, that's that's gonna work uh, mostly the glutes but I, I definitely again once I do start deadlifting I see it having some form of, of carryover and we are box squatting so that's something that I actually took from Eric Helms who you know he had been dealing with uh, some hip issues and again when I bring up SI joint issues I feel that yeah it's it's um, it's right by your lower back but I almost consider it more than anything a hip ailment um, and uh, with a box squat I can control my depth I can also control um, the fact that on some days I tend to lean more on on one side than the other the good side when it comes to you know the because it's my left side that left side of my side joint that's kind of um, iffy right now so sometimes on, on not so good days I kind of tend to lean towards the right and this kind of uh, it, it, when you're squatting to a box not box squatting but squatting to a box it's a lot more obvious when you are kind of swaying one way uh, overhead dumbbell press uh, you guys might have seen Jeff Alberts uh, does that quite a bit that's definitely my favorite go-to overhead press uh, seal row that is uh, also uh, just been one of my favorites over the course of the last year uh, so these are the main movements we're going to progress on and basically every single day we're going to do anywhere from from three to sometimes two to sometimes four of these movements and then when it comes to like isolation bodybuilding work we do have an arm day right 
We have a shoulder and tricep day. And again, more direct arm work because I need that. We have a back and bicep day and then a lower body volume day. And these kind of take place in the mix, uh, in the middle of what I think pretty much looks like a full body routine with the exception of uh, back and biceps, which typically, typically I will do the uh, back and biceps and uh, lower body day, which typically I'll do those on their own just because they, they tend to be longer days, obviously, because it's a bigger, bigger muscle group. Um, so what does day one look like? This is what I'm going to be filming today. Day one, we're going to, it's a volume day. That's what the V is for. So it's a volume day. Uh, we have front squats. So a five by nine on front squats and then a decline four by three with the dumbbells and then an all out set at the end. So those are pretty fun and they give me a good idea as to where I am strength wise and uh, what I should set my estimated max at for the next two weeks or so. And then we have a bench row at five by nine and that's gonna be day one. And I think along with this, what I'll probably end up doing is I'll probably end up throwing either arms or shoulders and triceps, but I think most likely it's going to be uh, shoulders and triceps is my secondary work. So my isolation work is gonna be, uh, it's gonna go on here. And then day two, it's gonna be front squats glute thrust in the six by three range, all of these six by three range. And this is more of a technique slash strength slash hyper range. So it's, it's definitely heavier loads, but pretty far away from failure. And you know, it's, it's not hard, I guess you could say, or, or intensive rather, but again, it just adds to my weekly volume. So as you can see, day one is front squatting, uh, day two is front squatting. And there's just a lot of overlap the way you would have on any full body-ish routine, but I guess what we do control is um, the volume and intensity on any given day. So we're never really quite uh, doing things the way a typical bodybuilding split uh, goes where, you know, say it's a, I don't know, your chest day or something, you're like, wow, my chest is just like so numb and pumped. No, we're never really tired because we're kind of just nibbling on things throughout the week. We're controlling the intensity. Um, but it lets us use quite a bit of frequency. And that's the one thing that I've noticed is it as my volume demands have gone up, I think rather than adding more to one day, I just kind of rather scatter it throughout the week. Uh, I think it really improves the quality of my work. Um, so, you know, it, it, everything is, is done with a lot more detail because obviously by the time you get to say your third chest exercise of the day, you're, you're quite fried and such. But this way, again, today, for example, I'm going to do these three movements and then shoulders and try day, which, yeah, it's kind of typical bodybuilding type stuff. But when it comes to the main stuff, the stuff where I really want to get stronger on and, and progress, they will just be scattered throughout the week. But we will be controlling, again, the volume um, and the, the intensity. So it might seem like a lot of overlap. It might seem like, whoa, you're never really well rested. And uh, yes, that is true. But to, at a certain point, you do adapt to this. And personally, I have found that uh, is, again, volume and frequency, we, we can't really just make them two separate entities. They kind of, um, in a way, uh, complement each other. Because again, I think, I think a lot of you guys have noticed that when you guys switch to training body parts twice a week, um, your volume kind of went up with that. Um, and again, in my case, I've been training for 15 years, there's a certain amount of volume that I feel at this point I need in order to progress and this kind of setup uh, lets me achieve that. So day one, two, all the way until four kind of looks like that. And then um, so d four days of basically a lot of this full body stuff going on where, uh, you know, loads are assigned. So if I think on front squats today, I might have 225 with five by nine, I think. Um, and then we have these uh, isolation type days. So it's uh, four days of main work, with these things and then uh, give or take when you include everything and then sometimes I have to catch up on my accessory work uh, it ends up being usually about five days um, so again this will make a lot more sense as we get into the actual filming and you guys actually see it happen uh, in vivo so um, yeah that's it I think uh, that pancake thing is digesting so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll venture on to the gym where we're meeting uh, my friend and fellow pro natural bodybuilder and one hell of a power if you're Brian Miner. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's uh, put these concepts into action. 
and one hell of a bodybuilder. I forgot to mention that. Uh, this was the opening set, I believe, and it was actually a bit lighter than, than I anticipated. This was 205 for a few sets of nine. I went back through the video and I saw that I did eight rather than nine, and I just kind of have a habit of doing that. I lose count on higher rep sets. So I went back and the perfectionist in me went to go pick up uh, those three missing reps. So I ended up doing a three by eight and then a, a single set of four, a single set of three to make up for the three by nine that should have happened. Um, so right now with the front squat, again, I'm still a, a, a bit lost with this. I think typically I do a much better job of staying upright, staying, staying braced and um, I think part of it is, is definitely rustiness, but then also uh, I think when it comes to, to uh, apparel, uh, my Nike shoes I think are perhaps a bit better when it comes to, to front squats. I like um, my Adidas for, for back squats, but I think in the long run um, the Nikes are going to suit me a lot better when it comes to uh, something like a front squat. So I think from this point on, or you might actually just see me give it a try and see if it's, I don't know if it's the rust or it's just me being um, being so used to, to my Nike shoes. So it's, it's, it's something that definitely needs to be addressed. And you're going to see here that, you know, no one's, I guess, bar path is perfect per se. But on a front squat, uh, you would hope it would be a bit more straight than this because with a heavy enough load, that little pitch forward is just not going to work out. So uh, this was the last set. Um, they felt terribly hard, um, but I, I do suspect it, it's going to get better. I think on most weeks I will be front squatting two to three times per week, and and eventually it's going to be you know something that um, you know I, I'm going to be able to narrow it down to you know just one or two cues and, and go. I think at this point I have just too many things going through my head. So a three by nine on front squats. And we go from a leg day to a chest day. So we had um, plus sets um, on the uh, dumbbell decline. So I had the 120s. I was scheduled for 115s, but I had 110s uh, or 120s to pick from. And I went with the heavier load simply because I tend to be a pretty reppy guy. And uh, what ends up happening is after these sets, I kind of end up setting my one rep max for the next uh, two weeks or so that I, I get to work off of. And uh, with the 115s, I just feel like I would have uh, continued going for an uh, amount of reps. It just doesn't really, I guess, represent how strong I, I truly am. So uh, I went with the 120s. I think I was going to get a much better number at the end. So um, this was uh, my first set. And then this next set is going to be my plus set. And it's hilarious because I actually had Brian Miner play cameraman, and I don't think he's used to this, so he totally felt uh, for sure like the, the Jim D-bag videotaping his friend uh, doing a not-so-impressive lift uh, with the 120s. But um, set of eight, RPE of about nine or so, so pretty much where I thought I would land, and I'm really glad, again, I didn't grind out that uh, final rep. I think on these sets, I'd much rather you know, ended with one rep in the tank simply because otherwise I tend to really tap myself out to the point where it will affect the next training session. And uh, again, I have these, this was my Monday and I most likely will be doing these again on Wednesday for a, a six by three, I believe. So um, yeah, again, I think uh, it's, it's the, the longer you do this, the more you stop looking at uh, training as a single day, a single set, but more so, you're just more aware of what's going on going on through, throughout a whole training block. And um, definitely in the back of my mind was the fact that I am pressing again on, um, on Wednesday. So I got eight, and yeah, I'd say about an RPE of nine. Um, and again, I'm going with this one just because as, as weight gets heavier, I think uh, it's, it's the one that I, I have the easiest time getting into position with. So... For now, we're going to go with this. I don't have any powerlifting meets scheduled in the near future, so we won't be bench pressing much at all, if at all, these next few weeks. And here we go, 3x9 with that infamous seal row. This is set number one. 
you're going to see set number three in a second here. And this is how I've had to set it up at, uh, at our new gym here in, uh, in Fort Collins. So yeah, I moved to Colorado, guys. That's one thing um, I have not touched upon. So I'm no longer working out training. We don't work out, we train. I'm no longer training at um, the gym in Sacramento, which kind of sucks because what ended up happening is uh, that CJ, the gym owner there, ended up getting a, um, a bench specifically to do this movement. So it's, it's something that uh, he asked me for the specs and it uh, his welder was not able to get it in until well basically I, I found myself here in Fort Collins so um, so yeah I, I, I have to kind of uh, you know make my own bench but that's kind of how it started and uh, no problem at all so long as the gym has no issue with me doing that uh, so we went from rowing so we went from squatting to chest pressing to rowing to now we're going to have that shoulder accessory day and, um, you know, I think delts is definitely something that I don't need to do a bunch of direct work for. But I definitely think that when I keep overhead pressing in my program, my shoulders tend to stay healthier. And uh, all my presses that I really do need, my chest presses, which is a lagging body part on me. Uh, it's not lagging like as obvious as other things like, like arms, calves, hamstrings. But it's definitely something that I, I could bring up. So when I keep these in the program, I think um, they definitely help keep things balanced in my shoulder girdle and um, I, I tend to have less uh, shoulder issues which again I, I've mentioned before it's just it's just leftovers from being reckless in my younger years but um, but yeah so we did a, a five by eight or a five by nine something like that with I think this was 52 or 55 pound dumbbells I like to do them single arm again standing and uh, as you can see that uh, <laughs> by by this angle here, which again does a crappy job capturing what I'm doing. I'm still kind of getting used to kind of rusty at this videotaping myself since I haven't been uploading a whole lot of videos here to YouTube. Um, as you can see, yeah, I've, I've, I'm definitely in the high 170s. Um, uh, I'm definitely storing a lot of uh, junk in that behind right now. So we're, we're uh, give or take, I'd say about 15-ish pounds above contest weight. Um, since I did uh, most of my shows between 167 and 163. So it's definitely uh, a healthy weight. And by healthy, just, you know, joints have a lot of extra cushion, which is, which is nice. Um, I don't feel as fragile. Um, so yeah, healthy weight. Uh, I was supposed to do a few mini cuts, but I kept running into, I was either um, dealing with that SI joint injury and you don't want to diet while being hurt. It's just going to really uh, do you a disservice in regards to recovering from, from the injury. And, um, and then, yeah, then I got really ill just the next week once I tried to restart the, the, the mini cut. So for now, just kind of uh, eating at a relative maintenance and trying to progress in the gym. So that's, that's kind of the goal for now. And uh, here's Brian Miner doing lateral raises uh, with me so we we definitely felt the burn on this day uh, he also kind of had a full body day so he has a very similar split um, obviously his um, his uh, the way he created his split it's it's a little bit more catered to what he needs to bring up but um but yeah you know we, we like the big lifts but we still get our bodybuilder in um, actually doing rear delt work direct rear delt work for the first time ever First time in years, but again, I think this is like the overhead pressing more so for therapeutic versions, for th therapeutic reasons. So um, yeah, that's it. This is the first update. Again, just a whole lot of everything going on. It's going to make much more sense, but it's basically a full body split with certain uh, days uh, or segments during the week where we're focusing on on body parts, primarily body parts that are lagging. So hey, first uh, first one down. Let's see if. Uh, we can uh, get on a hot streak here.